Today we are answering your Nikon questions. We get asked a lot of questions. We have three questions to answer. Three, we have a list. Today we are starting a new series about Nikon questions and answers. We get asked very specific questions, so today we're going to cover three particular questions that we've been asked. We'll start with D780 long exposures. The D780 has a new feature called extended shutter speed. So the first question is, how do you use that? Okay, so back in the day, on all previous generation cameras, the longest exposure we could use is 30 seconds. You could use bulb, which you would have to time yourself or via remote control cable. Uh, now we can set the shutter speeds of 60 seconds, 90 seconds, up to 15 minutes. And why would you want to use long exposures like that? Well, if you need to use exposures longer than 30 seconds for, let's say, star photography, night sky photography, right. that might be quite useful. Mm -hmm. So it is available on D780. It's the first camera that has it. D6 will also have it as well. Right. And we hope that they will implement it uh, via firmware updates in cameras like Z-series cameras and D850, fingers crossed. It would be great to have that. So what menu option do you need to go into on the D780? So we need to set it on in the custom settings. Uh, the menu setting is called D6 Delta 6, and it's called Extended Shutter Speed. So okay. if we set it to on, then the Extended Shutter Speed will be available only in manual mode. So Shutter Speed Priority, it won't be available there. Right. But if you go to manual mode, you can set the Shutter Speed you want that's all it is. Fantastic. So that's an extra useful tool. Next question, Becky. What is tethering? That's a nice, simple one. So tethering is when you connect your camera via USB cable to your computer, and that allows you to transfer the images instantaneously as you shoot. You will need the cable that comes in the box. Looks like that most of the time. Sometimes they're longer. Um, a lot of people find that the cables that come in the box are too short, so you may want to get a longer USB cable. But essentially, you're just connecting the camera via its USB port on the side to your computer. You will need some software. Yes. The Nikon software is called Camera Control Pro 2. Just rolls off the tongue. Camera Control Pro 2, but also, I believe, Lightroom. Yes. Um, Capture uh, One. Pro. Yeah, also allow you to shoot tethered to most Nikon cameras if it's an up-to-date piece of software. Uh, that means that if you're in a studio environment and you have your computer there and you want the files transferred immediately, you can do it just by using a simple USB cable. You'd be amazed at how many people don't know that the cable that comes in the box will do that for you. So that answers that, I think. Wow. Amazing. Question number three is about manual white balance. So how would you set your white balance manually on a Nikon camera? Okay, so imagine you know the color temperature of your lights. So let's say 5,500 kelvins. To do that, you go to the camera and you set your white balance to K mode and you set your color temperature uh, to the kelvins you want. Using the front wheel just the to The front wheel, out. so you just need to hold the white balance button and use the front wheel to set the color temperature. So imagine you have a gray card. So what you need to do is you need to go to your Nikon camera and go to your white balance setting. We're uh, gonna pretend that this is a gray card. It is not, but <laughs> it's close enough. It's not, yeah, it's neutral enough. Yeah. What you need to do is, again, press white balance camera um, button on your camera and set it to preset mode. So it it's says P R E. Pre. Pre. So once you set it there, press white balance button again and hold it till P R E starts to flash. At this point, you take a picture of your gray, gray card and it should say good. If it's good, then camera sets the white balance automatically for you. If it says no good, you have to do the same thing again and retake the shot. That's how you set the white balance. That is very, very handy to know. So if you're in a room or an event space, for example, which has lots of variable light sources, uh, doing a manual reading using a gray card and setting your white balance that way is gonna avoid the situation where all of the color temperature in your pictures is completely different. We hope you found this Nikon Q&A session very, very useful. If you have any questions you'd like to see us answer on video, just post them in the comments below or on social media and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.